Hello and welcome to GMAC Golf. You're tuned in to another episode of A Golfer's Ramblings. My name's Graham and today we're going to talk about what's more important, golf lessons or a club fitting. Now then, the reason I've thought of this question or wanted to do this topic is a lot of people say what's better, a golf lesson or new clubs. That's pretty obvious, a lesson. But when it comes to a club fitting, is that better than having a lessons? Having a lessons? Having lessons? Um, I've got my views on it. Um, and I think it's really important that every level of golfer is different. So whether you're just starting or whether you're a category one scratch handicap golfer, your needs are gonna are gonna be different. So again, I've um I've put it out to you guys. So first things first, let's hear from my good friend Sean Hargreaves and let's see what he's got to say on the matter. G Mac, Sean here. Your question about the golfers ramblings. Club fitting our lessons. Personally, I don't see the point of getting fitted for clubs if your game's all over the place. So for me, it's gotta be lessons first, because I'm a believer of, it's not the clubs, it's the people who are holding the clubs. If your game's all over the place, your swing's too steep, your swing's too shallow, your back swing's too fast, it doesn't matter. You've gotta get lessons. You've gotta get your game sorted then go and get fitted. That's my opinion. There you go. Speak to you soon. Bye. Okay, so there's, there's Sean's opinion that you need lessons before you get fit. And in a way, that makes perfect sense. Because like he says, if your game's all over the place, a fitting isn't necessarily going to cure those problems. However, what a fitting can do is mask those problems if you haven't got time for lessons but it's not gonna mask them for a long period of time. Bad swings will still come through and your bad faults will still be there. But a fitting can mask, can mask it. So that's Sean's opinions. Now, let's have a look at, I've also asked this question to Lee Whittaker, Lee Whittaker Golf. If you haven't seen his stuff, get over to his channel. I'll put the link up here or here, whichever side it is, um, to his channel, have a look. Now, Lee's got his own golf shop, which he does Club fittings at um, I think he's a I think he's a signed off fitter for Orca Golf, um, qualified fitter for Orca Golf. So you know, let's talk to someone in the know about club fitting and see what his views are on the uh, on the subject. So here's what Lee thinks. Right then, GMAC, thank you for the question. So club fitting or lessons? Now, this to me is a different question to club to lessons or new clubs. I think if you're going to do golf properly, then you should be getting lessons every month, or at least commit yourself to a bank of lessons throughout the year, whether that's six lessons a year or, or 12 lessons a year. So you should be doing that anyway. Um, and what's the point in lessons if you're not gonna have clubs that are fitted for you is kind of my argument. So I suppose my answer really is both, but at what stage do you get fitted for? I think if you're just a beginner, you should just buy any cheap clubs, see if you like golf, and go and get lessons and get a little bit better at it. If you're at a level where you can compete at golf um, decently, then you should get fitted clubs and continue to get lessons every month. And then as your swing develops and as your golf develops, your club pro can, um, or should be able to, to talk, change your club for you, loft lie, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my answer. I think really both is should be done lessons all the time uh, and club fittings as your swing changes but any decent club fitter worth their salt if someone comes in and isn't ready to be fit yet and should have lessons to start then i definitely definitely think they should turn them away really um, and tell them to go and get lessons and then get fitted at a later stage but that's my answer gmac and for your channel only here's little rosie See you later, G-Mac. Thanks for the question, mate. So, first things first, how cute Lee's parrot? 
But yeah, there's Lee's views. And Lee has a similar opinion of me, which I'll go into my opinions um, in a little minute. But yeah, he's saying you need lessons and club fitting. And I can see his train of thought. I can understand fully why he's saying that, um, which he elaborates on in the um, in his, his answer. So that's Lee's opinion, club fitting and lessons. And to be honest, makes sense having both, doesn't it? Let's be honest. So my final guest, as it were, is Kev from A Golf Guy Reviews. Now, if you ever want any shoes before you go and buy them, check out Golf Guy's Reviews channel. This guy reviews footwear like nobody else. Hooker. His link will be either side, um, but let's see what he's got to say. Hi, GMAC. Thanks for the question. Club fitting or lessons? For me personally, I think lessons comes first. Uh, I've just finished a session at the range, and as you can see here, actually, with a 7-iron, I was hitting a 7-iron anywhere between 145 yards to I think my biggest was 182, uh, with my average being about the 170 mark. Now, for me, fitting isn't going to reduce that dispersion that much. That's my faults with my swing. Um, and so when I connect really well with it, it means it can go an absolute bomb, and then quite often I can chunk it or catch it thin or do whatever. And that's not down to the fitting, that's down to me. So personally, my recommendation is that if you're just starting out with golf, go get a cheap second-hand set of clubs. They can still be decent, but they can be cheap as well. Learn how to play the game, learn what your swing's like, go get some lessons, develop the fundamentals, and then once you've got your basics down of your swing, then go get fit, because you can get fit around how you hit the ball at the moment. And then maybe you have some more lessons and you develop your skills, and actually you need another fitting, so you need to then tailor them a little bit more. Um, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. I had some lessons, I got fit, and now my skills have progressed, uh, and I've got bigger and I've got stronger in terms of going to the gym more. It means I'm hitting the ball differently. Uh, and so it means that actually now I need some more lessons because my legs and my arms just aren't connected, which is exactly why I can hit a ball 145 yards and I can hit a ball 182 yards within the space of two shots. Um, so definitely I need more lessons. Then once I've got my swing down again, then I'll probably get another fit. So there's Kev's views on the on the matter. Nice of him to throw some data up, which obviously highlights the the disparity between shot to shot. Um, and what he's saying there is that um, disparity is caused by swing rather than, than, than club. So he's basically saying um, to cure that um, disparity, he would get lessons rather than fit. So again, but as as he as he elaborated. It's a case of lessons then fit, lessons then fit as you progress and as you get better, which I totally, totally understand. Now, I also spoke to a PGA pro who teaches as well as club fits. Um, and what, and it's this guy's called uh, Matt Pugh, works at my local range, doing great, great things for, um, for junior golfers. I'll stick his Twitter handle up somewhere, uh, probably the link below, uh, well worth a look. Um, but what Matt's saying is, I tell you what, I'll put his Twitter answer up and you can read it yourself. So yeah, what Matt's saying is it's a combination of both. You know, a fitting and a lesson should sort of be the same sort of thing. And that's sort of where I'm coming into. That's where, where I'm sort of sitting. So I got fit last year for my current clubs and I was having lessons at the start of the year. So when I was fit, I was sort of in a transition. So I got fit midway through a swing, with swing change, which meant my specifications were X. Due to me gaining a few pounds, my swings regressed to how it was before I started the lessons. It's gone backwards. Um, because I can't swing it how I want to because I'm a fat lump, but that will change. But because of the fitting, and because the way the fitting was done, that actually helped in the sense that, although I've regressed, I'm still delivering the club well because of how the club was fitted during the process. So what a good club fitter should be doing is while you're having, if you're having lessons, the guy, if, if your pro isn't fitting you, the club fitter should be asking you questions around what you're doing in the lessons. 
and what you're working on. So for me, it was delivering the, flattening my swing out and delivering a less high handle. So for whatever reason, what my delivered numbers and whatnot meant I was two degrees or bright and whatever. So although my swing has now regressed, I'm still getting, like I say, I'm still getting good delivery numbers because whilst my club was being fit, the club fitter was asking questions around what I'm working on. So they can then build that into the club build and what you need. So lessons, and if you're having lessons and you get fit, you need your club fitter should be asking you what you're working on. And like Lee Whitaker said, if you're not at a level where you should be fit, if your swing is way all over the place, your strike's all over the face, and, and, and you're not at a level where you should be getting fit, the club fitter shouldn't be thinking, oh, well, I can make a few quid off this guy, I'm gonna fit him anyway. A decent club fitter should say, listen, what you need, mate, is lessons. I put you in for a lesson with it, because most club fitters will be able to give you lessons. Most, not all. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important that you do need both lessons and club fitting go hand in hand so this isn't uh, one or the other this isn't this is why I chose this question because it's not a case of well new clubs will make you better or golf lessons will make you better you need both if you can have lessons and club fit together you're going to be the best you can possibly be at that swing your swing changes go for another fit now again depending on the clubs you get let's say you get a nice set of forged irons they can be tweaked up, down, left, right. You know, you can. They can be tweaked throughout the course of their life, to a degree. Again, with cast clubs, cast clubs can be can be bent, but they have less tolerance on a cast club. So, depending on what you've got, will depend on how many times you can get them tweaked. But but that's it. After your main custom fit, assuming your swing speed doesn't change drastically, you're not going to need to change shafts. But your loft and light, well, your loft won't change, but your lie angles may change because your angle of the tax uh, and so on will change. So it's really important, it's really key that you do have lessons and you continue to have lessons to improve. But then also get fit at the same time. You know, it's, so that's, that's for me, I think you definitely, definitely need both. I went, what I would say around club fitting as well, is be a little bit. Be a little bit open-minded, but be a little bit closed-minded at the same time. I went to my, my fitting completely open-minded. I was using Mizuno MP5 blades at the time, and I'd had a good handicap reduction. You know, so I'd, I'd made decent, you know, I was hitting the ball well, I was scoring well, I was playing well. So I went for my fitting, um, and I was fitted into most of you know an AP3. At the time, I didn't know the AP3 wasn't forged. AP3 is a cast club, hollow headed design, cast club, and it hasn't got a forged face. So, whilst I'm hitting the ball, I'm hitting the ball well, you know, I'm, I'm, there's no, the actual fitting process in the club that was fit to me is perfect. You know, I hit the ball well, great numbers, whatever, however, this is where I wish I'd have been a little bit more closed mind. I wish I'd have gone. I wish I'd have got the AP2 or the ECB. Reason being is because the way I don't like the sound, stroke, feel of the AP3 off the face. Now, at the time, it didn't really bother me. The more I've played with it, the more I've got used to it, I, I can't get used to that feel of a non cast uh, a non forged club you just can't get get used to it so that's where i think you need to be a little bit closed minded to a degree but in the same vein you still need to go in with an open mind i know that's a double entendre i know that's sort of going going against what i'm saying but if you want forged you want forged get fitted for a forged club or something with a forged face, like uh, Golf Nuts did the other week. He did the Lynx VT Prowler, hollow headed design, but it's got a forged face. And from what I can gather, it feels as good as a fully forged club. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough one, but lessons 
So that's my fitting experience. Lessons, and I think when it comes to lessons, it's really important that you get lessons with someone you can relate to. Now I'm really lucky that one of my good friends is a teaching pro, and I've known him for a long, long time. So depending on what mood I'm in, if I want to geek out on numbers, I can say, I can go in and say, Luke, what, what, what's my delivery numbers? What's my spin numbers? And we can really drill down into numbers. If I go in and say, Luke, listen, mate, I just want to get the ball, you know, I want to get the ball straight. I want to work on this, I want to work on that. We won't sort of geek out, we'll just give it real basic things. So he's really good and he can work at all skill levels. You know, he's had, he's had European tour players in his net working with him. That's where his skill sets are. So he's a very, very good teaching pro. And I'm lucky to work with him. So, but that's, but for me, we fit well. If we didn't, although he's a mate, if we didn't fit well, my progression would hold because I wouldn't take it, I wouldn't retain the information, I wouldn't take the information on. So you need to find a pro or, you know, a teacher, a coach, that you gel with, that you can work with and can deliver the information the way you need it to be delivered for you. So, in short, club le uh, lessons or club fitting? I think the answer is pretty clear. I think you need both. Um, if you're brand, brand new to the game, like all, all pretty much all three guys have said, get yourself something off eBay, off Golf Bidder, off uh, Clubs for Cash. You can get up some really, really nice clubs for some really, really good money. So, get yourself set up. Find out if you enjoy it. If you enjoy it, then start having lessons. As you progress, get yourself fit. Keep having lessons. Get yourself tweaked. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a constantly evolving process. So, in short, as I say, club fitting or lessons, the answer's both, for my opinion. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you're enjoying this new format where I'm getting you guys involved. Um, stick your comments down below what you'd like me to talk about for the next episode. Um, and I'll see what I can work out for you. If you want to be involved, drop me a DM on Twitter. Give me a message down below and I'm sure we can make it work. Guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. Click the bell notification so you get my... Uh, um, get notified when I'm sticking a, a video out which is Thursdays at 6 o'clock at the minute as soon as the weather changes as I say I'll be getting on the golf course I'll be filming some golf content it won't just be me in the car ramblings will be Thursdays golf content will be Mondays I'll be uploading twice a week for sure guys thank you so so much and I will speak to you soon